Yes, that is the sound of the fiber laser. Commarker reached out to me and asked if I wanted to take a look at their new 20 watt fiber laser. I said, sure, why not? Doctor always says fiber is good for me. At the release of this video, currently the Commarker B4 is only available on Kickstarter. And as of today, it has 67 backers. It has a modest pledge goal of $10,000, which makes me believe that this is more of an advertising campaign more than anything. It is basically just a one month long campaign, so let's take a look at the bundles that are available. With a $19.99 pledge, you get the Com Marker B4 with a 11 centimeter field lens and a 20 centimeter field lens to your warranty goggles. And we'll scroll down past the other one, it's basically a duplicate. And for $21.99, you get a rotary access chuck. Hmm, not too bad. And the uh, last level, you basically get another rotary access chuck B. Now, when it comes to Kickstarter, I would suggest that you read the risks that are involved. And um, some people enjoy backing projects and others do not. So it's in your best interest to review their policy and see if it best works for you. Personally, I've backed um, six items and they've all been fulfilled. So I just want to give you that heads up before we begin. And to purchase it, there's the link provided below. Now, this is actually a prototype unit. It was a prototype. Its purpose was certainly altered. So I didn't do it in a boxing like I traditionally will do because I do not know if this will actually be received in the same packaging or not. And then the package I received, you get the base, you get the gobble head, the Z axis that you all have to assemble. You get the power cable, USB, a few tools, a foot activated switch. You also get a rotary, safety goggles. I'll cover that in a few minutes. And software that's on a USB drive. And that about covers it. Assembly is quick and straightforward. So you hit see that stepper motor has a flat edge. And what we're gonna do is we're going to align one of these rub screws to that flat edge and we're going to just take the z-axis plop it down there tighten down these two grub screws on either side and you also want to make sure that those other grub screws are tightened as well slide the sleeve over and then we're going to just install or tighten down four bolts don't go over tighten just make sure they're nice and snug because you are going into an aluminum bed and then once we tighten down this last one, we are going to install the gobble laser head. And this will take just four more screws. Now you really want to be careful with this. There is fiber optic cables that are attached to the end of this. And you want to make sure that they're not kinked in any way. We're going to just line this up and we're going to install the four screws that are provided. And once we get these tightened down, it's almost done with the assembly. Yeah, it's very straightforward and pretty easy. Personally, I would have liked to see that these were like uh, thumb screws because there's a way to use this off of it. Unfortunately, I will not cover that in this video, but it'd be nice to have like a quick release type function. Now this does have a power um, Z axis, but it also has a manual crank. You put that uh, little bushing in there and put the crank on and you, then you just tighten down this bolt. And that is it. Definitely want to make sure that you have the washer in with that uh, bolt. You have this little handle, and then you can move this up and down manually if you so choose. Next, we're going to plug in the power and uh, plug in the USB. I do not have to open this up uh, because this is already pre-configured for US power, so I don't need to flip that switch on the inside for the power supply. You have that emergency stop. Make sure that's pulled out and press the power button. Now we're going to grab the pink USB drive and plug it in. And as you see, it's a pretty small unit, not too bad. Before we begin, yes, safety time. And disclaimer, 
Safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. And I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. I'd like to make an additional safety precaution here. These lasers are open air. So you need proper ventilation and possibly an enclosure. And um, what do I mean by proper ventilation? Well, you may want to have some type of exhaust system hooked up where you could actually vent outside and or filter or both. As you can see here, I was in laser engraving a coin and you can see all these particulates that could have been airborne. And I may need to actually upgrade my system here because apparently it did not catch all of it. You do not want to be breathing in any of these airborne particles and because most likely they could be deadly to your health. So please exercise proper precautions when operating these machines. Now I've stopped uh, using laser goggles or safety goggles that were provided with laser machines I received a long time ago. I did my own research and bought my own pair. I received an email from ComMarker saying that um, they are going to replace the safety goggles that we the testers received, which were the standard green tinted ones with some new and better ones that all the backers are going to receive. They are safety certified, so hopefully um, more manufacturers will take notice of this step and um, move this direction. Now let's get started, power up the machine, and let's show you how to focus this. As mentioned, you have a powered Z-axis. Move it up and down to adjust the focus, and uh, you will see that there is um, the hand crank is spinning on the top. You want to make sure the lens cover is off, place the material underneath, and try to get the all three dots to combine into one. And now you're focused. Now let's install the driver for your laser. You're going to open up Device Manager, you're going to click on the unknown device, and we are going to make sure the USB is plugged in, and we're going to go ahead and search for the driver. Go ahead, go to the, your USB drive, click on Windows 10 or your operating system, and then click Next. You got to agree to install the driver, and that is it. You're all set. The driver is now installed, and you get all the beeps for verification for Windows. Now with EasyCAD, we're going to copy the software folder, and we're going to just place it wherever you want on your machine, because you don't want to be running EasyCAD off the USB drive. And you're just going to copy it and paste it create a new folder if you like and then we will actually launch easycad through that instead there's really no other installation needed now you can create a shortcut if you so choose and then we're going to just launch easycad exe find all that garbly gook hit ok and um, now it's going to launch now there's plenty of tutorials out there on the YouTubes and how to use it. But let's make sure that uh, our laser is aligned. I'm just going to create the circle here and I'm just going to resize it a little bit here. Let's see, maybe uh, go a little bit smaller and do, let's say, uh, 40. And then we're going to click on the arrow and then we're going to click center. Basically, we just want to make sure that our laser outline preview matches the engraving. So what we're going to do is actually check the box, show contour, and then hit the red. So once we do that, we show contour, hit the red, and then we can mark it. And now we can see the, our line and hit the read again, and you can see that we're off by maybe like two millimeters. Now we can adjust that. You can click F3 and open it, and we are going to adjust our offset for our X axis. And let's just bump it like half a millimeter and then we could test it again to see if uh, bumping it made any difference. I'm going to use the red outline and then we're going to just do another mark. We enable the red contour outline. And this, then we're going to hit mark, create a new mark, and now we're going to hit red outline again for the contour. And we are now aligned. Now, let's uh, before we begin, let's see who our video sponsor is for today. And today's video sponsor is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB? Well, look no further than PCB Way. They're their one-stop shop for your PCB and manufacturing needs. 
want to just generate a quote, it's pretty simple. Then you could do a standard PCB, advanced PCB. You could do a FTC rigid flex PCB. You could do some assembly and you could also do SMD stenciling, but that's not it. They also offer CNC and um, 3D printing. <laughs> it's literally a one-stop shop for all your needs. If you're looking for a little project to do? Look at the shared projects. And you can go ahead and basically order a whole kit and just do a little project that someone else has created. It's a great community section for to share your ideas and have other people build the projects that you are working on. And I would like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue on to the Com Marker 20 watt fiber laser. Initiating laser. Now Com Marker is um, advertising some very fast speeds here. So let's test it out. We're gonna open up this uh, Star Wars as the calendar here. And we're going to just resize it to about 40. It's soft screen. And now we're gonna just go ahead and center it. And there we go, now we can see it. And let's go ahead and change the default settings here on this pen right here. It's the black pen and we're going to change it to 15,000, a power of, let's say 85. And then we'll just do um, frequency 20. That's fine. I don't think frequency really matters for this part as much. And then we are going to add some text below. Let's just put in the parameters that we have for, for this engraving. So that way I have some visual reference on how it looks. Now, since this is a vector file, it's going to go really fast. You're basically just doing all lines. If it was doing anything like for hatches, like filling it in, sure, it would take a little bit longer. So as I'm putting these uh, parameters here, let's go ahead and apply them. And let's go ahead and resize this a little bit and bring it down. Now I'm doing three different uh, tests here. This is the one that's uh, full on max speed. And I have two other tests. We're gonna run them all at the same time on this video. So you have a visual comparison. Now it won't be fair a little bit because there's one more character in this. Um, and actually two of them than one of the others because one was 5,000. So let's see what the comparison is with speed here. Now, I have to say, the head was pretty darn quick, and the detail is absolutely amazing. So, yes, it could go fast, very fast. Now, let's apply some infill. And with this, we're going to use hatching. So, we're going to take our same parameters here, but we're going to just change the power because it's not really needed for this test, and um, we're doing infill. And um, we applied too much heat on that. Um, aluminum blank business card it is going to warp on us so let's bring down the speed here and I think 50 is still overkill but uh, we're going to do this for let's do four different settings here and we'll see how fast the hatching process is again it's kind of unfair because there's gonna be a, another digit in a couple of them but let's go ahead and run this test see how fast it can go with hatching
And here's this little one, still going. But now, this is just a test for speed. And um, typically your higher speed passes are going to be just for cleanup work. And for those delicate materials. As you see, all of them are very clear. That's because it's just removing basically the paint. Let's continue on now. Now I ran the settings on a coin blank, 250 millimeters per second, power 80, and a frequency of 30. Explorer. So I'm going to just go ahead and create a keychain off these settings since I really like these settings. Wife's Explorer is at 220,000 miles since 2013. So let's go ahead and engrave it and uh, throw it on our keychain. I wiped it off. Very crisp and clear. This is a 0.01 resolution. Very impressed. Very impressed. Of course I did on both sides. Tire of your tools, groin legs, and walking off? Well, engrave them. I use the same settings as the keychain as I did with here. And look at that. Wipe it off, and nice and clear. Now, your tools won't grow legs and walk off. Wish I can do that. I'm not a fan of engraving plastics, but this is just for demo purposes because they can really release some toxic, toxic fumes. So, please make sure that it's properly ventilated. But as you can see, if you want to personally engrave a power brick or something, or a back of a phone, easily can do that as well. Now you can see how they actually get those um, power settings and everything that are on these bricks and are white with the laser. Now this isn't meant to be an instructional video, just an overview of the laser, but let's create a coin. First we're going to do an outline of a circle here. Uh, let's set it to 37. We're going to center it and now let's do a contour pass on here and make sure that we are where we need on our brass coin. Perfect. Now, we're going to actually hide this layer because we really don't need it anymore. It's just for a reference. We're going to go ahead and open up our Star Wars calendar. And now we're going to do our first layer. This will be a hatching layer. So then let's go ahead and hit open. It's off screen a little bit. We're going to change that to 37. And then we're going to hit center. Boom. There it is. Now we're going to use the first pen, which is black. Zoom in on it a little bit so we can see it better. Let's uh, change some of these settings. We're going to change this loop count to 30. We want 30 passes. Uh, let's keep the speed at 1000. Let's change the power to 90. And then we'll change the frequency to 35. Then we're going to click on Hatch. Make sure it's assigned to pen 0. And let's do the auto-rotate every for 30 degrees for every pass. Now we're going to do another later. Of course, you got to apply those settings. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure that uh, we select that file, change the size to 37. Now we're going to change the pen to, to blue. And this is our cleanup pass. And this is a vector pass. So we're going to do a loop count of 10. And we're going to bump up the speed to 4,000. But we're going to reduce the power. We're going to bring it down to, let's say, uh, let's do 30. And then we will change the frequency to 30. And now we're going to do another one. This is another file. Open the same file. And then we're going to change the pen to red. Each pen is assigned a layer. And we're going to basically do the loop count as 4. And we're going to retain the settings of the blue pen. So 4,000, 30, and 30. And that should be it. So now we're going to apply those settings in the hatch, but we're going to make sure that we're on the red and we're going to keep it at 33 degrees for auto rotation. And that is basically it. Of course, you don't want to save your file before you <laughs> start engraving by all your changes and everything. And let's see how this coin turned out.
I have to say, for, for my first attempt at really doing a coin here, in this level of detail, came out rather nice. Both sides. I could have lined it better for heads and tails here, but otherwise, you can see how uh, deep it engraved and the accuracy of 0 0.01. Cleanup passes are kind of a must here because it brings back the shine. And um, all I did was make sure I just rinsed it off with uh, some soap and water with a gentle scrub brush just to get rid of anything that's on there. But here it is with uh, just some high contrast here. So you can see the dark detail here on both heads and tails. Not too bad at all. Now it also offers a rotary if you so choose. The chuck is really easy to, it's just spring loaded and you reverse the spring to go the other way. And you have all these holes here to put pins in. So, and then you can lift it up and adjust your, for level with this little screw here and you just bring the nut down. Very easy to use. I'm mounting this on the X axis. Pretty small and actually high quality there. Now we're gonna just do a simple text file here and we are going to go to laser on the top there and then we're going to do rotary mark it's very important that we choose that and we're going to put our diameter in which is 12.55 yeah 55 five. and hit okay and then we're going to do perimeter here and we're going to make sure there are we're on x and then make sure all these default settings are the same and then we just hit mark it is pretty much that easy Again, make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area, use some extraction system like I have, and wear the proper safety goggles. Again, take this out now. As you see, I've done several tests on this, but it works. What can I say? Very simple, very simple process to laser engrave. Now I did create this uh, power and speed settings just to verify that yes you can get some color on some materials like stainless steel and you have to approach it at a correct angle to see it because if you don't you really don't see the colors all that well um, but yes you are oxidizing the surface layer here at certain temperatures to achieve this result so it's good to do a power and speed setting on materials that you have that way you know not to burn it or uh, put excessive heat to it now the video has gotten kind of long. Uh, hopefully I've uh, given you enough information there to see if you would like this machine. And what are my thoughts of it? Well, it's a fiber laser. It did what it did and it did it very well. I had zero issues with this. It is a prototype machine, so I'm not going to open it up. I think it's not justified. If this was a production unit. I'll definitely open it up and see how it was built. But everything I threw at it, it engraved great. And I... Any mishaps I had were definitely of my own fault because of just trying different settings. It is built mostly out of metal, except for where your gavel laser is. That's a plastic shroud. Otherwise, the build quality is very stout and solid. Now, one of the major problems I have with it is the bed. You know, where, where you could fasten down your material. It's all open down there. So particles will definitely fall in there and... Um, you don't want any of those particles to really fall in there. So I would think that they should have some type of substrate in there or something to help get that out of there. Because otherwise you're gonna to have to periodically open it and blow it out, any of the dust, contaminants or whatever. And um, you, cause you just don't want it to interfere with any of those precision electronics inside. Now, was it compared to with other lasers on the market? Well, I can speak with personal experience on this one. I backed on Kickstarter the Mr. Carve M1. And for a few hundred dollars more, you can get the COM marker B4. Now, um, let's take a look at the Mr. Carve M1. Um, you get a uh, 1064 nanometer 2 watt laser module that's affixed to a gavel head. It uses a similar app to EasyCAD called CCAT. And you can adjust frequencies and everything, just like a traditional fiber laser. However, with you don't get also the option for on this version of a rotary access also. So between having 20 watts of power, the rotary access, and you know, sure it doesn't have the resolution of 
the Mr. Carb M1, but man, you get a lot more bang for the buck. So I really hope that I've given you enough information if this is the right first laser for you. And um, if you're looking to back it, again, the link is in the description below. And please, you know, read through the Kickstarter obligations and, you know, risks that are involved with backing a project. So I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in. See you the next time on Tripods Garage.